literature collections are collections of short stories which are not adapted in any way. Um, they are collections of five or six stories built on a theme, for example, science fiction, adventure or horror. The stories are chosen to represent different themes, um, different voices and also different times. Some of the stories come from the 19th century, some from the 20th and some from the 21st. They're all short stories, but they're of varying length as well. So there are very short stories of maybe 1,500 words, and some of the stories are quite long, getting close to a short novel maybe even at 8,000 or 9,000 words. The collections act as a bridge, a bridge between the experience of reading a graded reader and taking a step out into authentic literature. In what way are they a bridge? Well, the stories can be read just on their own, as a story. But also, there is support material in the collections. Information about the author, some vocabulary work, even some grammar work. So the students who are used to being, maybe, cosseted a little bit, looked after, will feel that they've also got support here. There's support as well in the form of footnotes and glossaries. Why short stories? Well, a short story gives a sense of achievement that's much quicker than a novel. You can get to the end. Maybe you can even read it in one sitting. You get that feeling of completion, of closure, of having understood the whole thing in one go. A novel can be quite daunting when you're reading your very first novel in another language. It can be a great feeling to finish your first novel as well. But with a short story, you get there much quicker. So, you finish them quicker, and that means that you can read more of them. So you get more variety, a wider range of voices, um, more topics, more themes. And you move on, maybe even to a new genre that you've never read before. The literature collections offer flexibility. You don't have to read them all the way through. A novel's a pretty linear experience on the whole. I know some people read the end first and then go to the beginning. That's not what usually happens. If you take one of the collections, you can pick and choose. On the back, there are very, very short taglines describing the stories. In fact, you might not choose this collection after you've read the descriptions, you might choose this one instead. But if you read through, you might decide that, oh no, this is the one I'm most interested in, I'll read that one first. Or you might have a look, as I do quite often with short stories, to see exactly how short they are. You might go for the shortest first, or the longest. You don't have to read them all and you don't have to read them in order. You can pick and choose, come in and out. You can't really do that with a novel. The collections offer all kinds of support, but it's there if you want it. You don't have to take it. You can just take the story, read it, whichever story you want, and that is the whole experience. But if you want a little bit more, then the collections offer linguistic support. Ease of reading is so important and each story will have its own special lexis. There will be vocabulary that you need to understand that particular theme for example or maybe if the story is a 19th century story there may be some language which is a little bit archaic. There's a section before each story which pre-teaches the difficult vocabulary. You might not want to look at it until after you've read the story. You might look back at it afterwards and say, oh yes, I wondered about that word, and I would, that's what that meant. Or you might use it beforehand to lighten the load. It makes the reading much easier, much quicker. As you read, there are footnotes, most likely for words that are particularly literary, or maybe a little old-fashioned, or used in a particular way which you wouldn't normally find in a dictionary. And then there's a glossary. 
for those few difficult items, maybe one, possibly two a page, you can turn to the glossary at the back of the book if it's really slowing you down. After reading, there's a section, which um, a language study section, which looks at certain patterns which are repeated throughout the story. It might be the use of a particular uh, narrative tense. It might be the use of modals. It might be the use of adjectives and adverbs in descriptions, or maybe inversion to create dramatic effect. If you want to look at the language study, what you do get is an incredibly rich context for meaning, because the patterns have been repeated over and over in the story. There's cultural support as well. Information about the author if you're interested. Not everyone's interested in the author, but a lot of people are and it can add an extra layer of enjoyment to a story. There's background information about the story, things like um, the time it's set, or the place where it's set, or maybe some key information or, or feature. And throughout the stories, when there is language which is particularly culture-bound, then there's a footnote to help you. There's literary support as well. Some students who are reading the stories may be studying literature in their own language or may want to go on to study literature in a second language. The literary support in the collections is based very much on critical thinking, on discussing themes and the treatment of the themes within the stories. Before reading, there's a very short section which pinpoints the main themes of the stories and, and raises a couple of questions for the reader to think about as they read. Again, you may not want to do this before you read. For some people, it's a bit of a spoiler. You might want to come back to it afterwards. But for others, it kind of opens up a path for enjoying the story as you read. It gives you an extra layer again of reading. At the end of each story, there's a more detailed literary section which guides the reader through discussion questions about the character, the plot, the narrative, the treatment of the themes. This is a particularly good introduction to literary discussion and analysis for those students who are interested. And of course once you've finished the stories, um, or your students have finished the stories, there are lots of things you can do to follow up. Um, the students may not have been reading the same stories and it doesn't matter, but you can ask them to look for more stories by the same author if they particularly enjoyed that author's style, or in the same genre, or from the same time. Stories are very easy to source online, especially if they're out of copyright. You could listen to the audio versions of some of the stories at One Stop English. Many short stories are used as the basis for films, Short stories are much better as a basis for a film than a novel. Um, the idea encapsulated in a short story is much easier to adapt to a film. You lose a lot from novel to film. Short story to film is a much easier adaptation. And it's interesting to be able to compare the structure, the content. Of course, this is a bridge. And from the short story, you might want to move on to longer works. A novel by the same author, maybe? And why not start a book club of some sort? It could be very simple. Five minutes in class talking about what you've read. Or it could be online. Or it could be a whole monthly session of an hour given over to talking about whatever you've been reading. <laughs>